Good morning and namaste to all. I, Ms. Shanu Jain, Assistant Professor DME, welcome you all to the valedictory session of the Global Strategic Management Conference, edition 2021. It is indeed a pleasure to be addressing this August gathering of eminent guests, dignitaries, research scholars, faculty members, and students. Over the last one week, we have had a deep insight into several issues of workplace digitalization, and it is an enriching experience to have discourse on this topical and exceptionally relevant theme. I take great delight to introduce our institution, Delhi Metropolitan Education, a leading educational institute affiliated to Guru Gobind Singh Indraprasth University, New Delhi, and approved by the Bar Council of India. Located in the IT hub in Noida Sector 62, our institute is committed towards forming and sustaining conditions, enabling students to embark on an unparalleled educational journey that is intellectually, socially, and personally transformative and enriching. DME offers courses in the fields of management, journalism, and uh, mass communication. Under its agents, DME Management School offers an intensive three-year program spread over six semesters, aiming at building proficiency in the areas of business management. Our program is designed to capture the contemporary issues in management over a hybrid of theoretical and practical knowledge imparted to the students. Activities, uh, with the focus is on academic excellence. There are dedicated clubs related to marketing, finance, and HR, uh, cultural and communications club. We have a very active entrepreneurship cell working uh, to help the students to set up their own startups. Uh, we are, we are uh, lucky to have and grace the uh, occasions at different times with resource persons from corporate and academic world to share the management related insights through their own life experiences. Activity-oriented approaches like case study, role plays, brainstorming, industrial visits, research projects with two dedicated research centers, that is Center for Management Research and Center for Sustainable, for, uh, Sustainable Development are a regular feature. As we move ahead, let us have a crisp summary and the road ahead emanating from this seven-day intriguing consortium that is GSMC 2021. This year's conference theme was Workplace Digitalization, Challenges, Opportunities, and Future Trends. The day one of the conference, that is the inaugural ceremony, was in the framework as an HR conclave dedicated to distinguished and eminent HR heads from industry, including Mr. Rajiv Bhaduria, Managing Partner Ebulent, Ms. Gauri Das, Vice President and Head HR, India Factoring and Finance Solutions Private Limited, and Mr. Manoj Kumar Chaudhary, Head Human Resources at Edelweiss Asset Management, where deliberations on role of HR in workplace digitalization were conducted. The following days of the conference consisted of masterclasses and paper presentations by the participants on the sub-themes of the conference. We witnessed very encouraging response from academia and industry regarding the themes and sub-themes of the conference. A total of 50 abstracts were received for the conference, out of which 30 papers were selected for presentation in the four technical sessions, namely FinTech, chaired by Professor Dr. Nagendra Kumar Nagalingam from Sri Lanka, MarkTech, chaired by Dr. Shah Ahmed Khan from Oman, HR Tech, chaired by Professor C. Watts, Canada, and EdTech, chaired by, chaired by Dr. Farah Nakwi from Kuwait. And nothing can be more gratifying to have all our session chairs joining us today as well. We welcome you, sir and ma'am. On this concluding day, to keep the wheels of learning and deliberation rolling, we have the IT conclave unveiling the pertinent role of IT in workplace digitalization wherein we are being joined and graced with eminent VPs, CEOs, and CTOs from industry for sharing their thoughts on the conference. So without any further ado, my sincere request to Dr. Shalini Gautam, Associate Professor, DME Management School, and Head Outreach, 
to introduce our audience to the eminent guest for today. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Shanujan, ma'am, for giving me this opportunity to introduce the eminent personalities present in the session today. First and foremost, I'm honored to introduce the guiding force of our institute, Honorable Mr. Justice Bhavar Singh, Director General, Delhi Metropolitan Education. Honorable Mr. Justice Bhavar Singh was appointed in UP Judicial Service in April 1970 and promoted to higher judicial services in 1979. His Lordship presided over a special court of CBI, Dehradun, from 1983 to 87. Sir was elevated to Registrar Allahabad High Court in 1992 for three years. Sir graced the office of Registrar General, Supreme Court of India from 98 to 99, and was elevated to permanent judge of Allahabad High Court on March 26, 1999, until he laid his office in 2007. His Lordship was then appointed as the President, UP State Consumer Commission. Thereafter, Sir adorned the August Office of Chairman, Judicial Training and Research Institute, UP, from 2012 to 2014, and then joined Delhi Metropolitan Education as Professor and Director General in 2014. We welcome you, sir. Next, I would like to welcome Mr. Aman Sahani, Vice Chairman, Delhi Metropolitan Education, Sir is an alumnus of London School of Economics. His proactive digital orientation has led DME to become a robust digital campus much before the pandemic hit the world. His foresight and indigenous leadership creates a flourishing research environment and use of enhanced teaching and learning skills. We welcome you, sir. Further, we are also thankful to Director Sir, Professor Dr. Ravi Khan Swami for being here today with us. Professor Dr. Ravi Khan Swami, Dean DME Management School and Director DME, has over 24 years of experience in teaching and administration. Sir has done his MBA from Jain Narayan Vyas University, Jodhpur, and PhD from University of Pakistan, <coughs> Jaipur. He is a certified trained professional from IIM Calcutta and IIM Bangalore. He has guided two doctoral theses and has two books to his credit. Now I would like to welcome Professor Dr. Purva Ranjan, head DME Management School. Ma'am has done her PhD in Retail Marketing Management and MBA in International Business Management. She is also founder and head of Mentoring Cell, Entrepreneurship Cell and Skill Cell at DME. She is also a certified Porsche trainer. She trains the ICC committee members in handling the Porsche process. Dr. Purva works closely with students for skill enhancement purposes for various areas like digital marketing, Microsoft 365 tools, entrepreneurship development, cybersecurity, Google tools, to name a few. Over the years, she has organized several FTPs, workshops, and many national and international conferences. Now, I would like to introduce our three industry guests who are gracing the occasion today, starting with Mr. Heman Sahal. Mr. S Mr. Heman Sahai. Mr. Heman Sahai is the founder and CEO of CallPol a mobile first cloud hosted and comprehensive enterprise technology platform adopted by education institutions, including Ashoka University, Manipal University, D.Y. Patel University, O.P. Jindal Global University, and our institute, Delhi Metropolitan Education. He's a FIKI EdTech Task Force member and a Crystal Young Thought Leader. Welcome you, sir. Next, I would like to introduce Mr. Mukesh Dube, General Manager and Global Head Cybersecurity Operations, NetSurian Technologies, Florida. Mr. Dubey is a cybersecurity professional with more than 20 years of experience in enterprise cybersecurity strategy, enterprise security architecture, and program management for complex business and technology systems in various industry sectors. Additionally, he is an independent researcher and pursuing PhD in computer science. Further, we also have with us Mr. Bharata Vasudevan, Senior Vice President, Head of Capability, BPS Tech Mahindra, Malaysia. Mr. Vasudevan has over two decades of experience in leadership roles across global MNCs and privately held organizations. He is skilled at incubating and growing new ideas and businesses, fostering technology-led innovation, especially in VUCA environments, relationship management, and managing large, globally dispersed and diverse workforce. 
Mr. Vasudevan is a metallurgical engineer from IIT Madras and MBA from Indian Institute of Management, Bangalore. He has a postgraduate diploma in digital business in collaboration with MIT and Columbia Business School. Lastly, we are also joined by three session chairs of our technical session of the conference. We are having with us Professor Nagendra Kumar Nagalingam, Associate Dean at Slit Business School, Sri Lanka, Dr. Shahad Ahmed Khan, Assistant Professor at College of Business, University of Guraymi, Oman, and Dr. Farah Nakpi, Faculty, GCUE, Kuwait. Due to some unavoidable engagement, one of the chairs of the technical session, Professor Dr. Sean Watts, Kempium University, South Korea, is not able to join us, but has conveyed his best wishes. I would like to welcome all the distinguished eminent personalities today in the session. We are honored to have all of you here with us. Now to officially start the valedictory ceremony, I hand over the platform to the conveners of the session, GSMC 2021, Dr. Seema Ma'am and Dr. Pooja Sharma Ma'am. Thank you so much, Ma'am. Uh, at the very outset, uh, I would like to invite, I request his Lordship, Honorable Mr. Justice Bhama Singh Sir, Director General DME, to address the gathering and give us his blessings. Uh, please, Sir. Mr. Aman Sani, the Vice Chairman of uh, Sunshine Educational Society. August gathering of uh, guests of honors, Mr. Sahel. Mr. Dubey, Mr. Vasudevan, Mr. Nagalingam, Dr. Khan, and Dr. Farah Nakvi, Dr. Ravikant Swami, faculty members, and dear participants. I'm very happy to be a part of this valedictory session of uh, Workplace Digital Conference. As a matter of fact, this conference has been organized at a very uh, appropriate time, as it is not yet, cert yet certain that pandemic is over or not. Also, nobody knows how much time this uncertainty is going to last. We are still apprehensive of the third wave in our country. And as you know, in some parts of uh, Europe, fourth and fifth wave have lashed the cities. This global scenario has taught us digitalization of workplace, as a matter of fact, digital workplace has become a need of the hour and a core part of this experience in almost every organization. Friends, uh, in an effective digital workplace, employees enjoy an increase in flexibility in both their work schedules and in their work environment. It has many fold advantages. Digital workplace saves on travel and overhead costs like office space and furniture. And working from home help also improve pollution. Friends, in a recent survey, 77% of remote workers are already reporting higher productivity levels. This is likely due to digital advances that streamline processes and allow employees to get more work done in less time. Digitalization has reduced the stress of employees which ultimately helps in productivity. The question arises, how can a digital workplace enhance your organization's communication and innovation? It is simple. 
answer is by encouraging two way communication between lower level and higher level employees a well constructed digital workplace allows the free flowing exchange of ideas within every organization everyone has the chance to express their views and ideas collaboration tools like employees directories social profiles and activity feeds allow employees to communicate and connect with each other creating a strong professional bond that promotes teamwork and creates a sense of belonging <clears throat> using effective digital tools such as an internet that can enhance analytical integration will allow you to identify kpis like bounce rate and time spent on site friends the concept of digital workplace has improved employees satisfaction too in the right digital workplace there are opportunities to network with peers connect with team members and share ideas these capabilities allow employees to freely express their views positive and negative both minus and plus and feel valued promote employee happiness and engagement with these words i convey my compliments to my uh, dme management faculty who have organized this 7 8 days long conference very successfully and i'm sure that it will enhance knowledge of each one of the participant as to how further improve on our infrastructure thank you god bless you all thank you so much thank you very much sir for your inspirational words now i would request mr raman sahani vice chairman delhi metropolitan education to please share his thoughts on the theme of the conference Uh, sir uh just give me a moment i'm checking yes ma'am size there sorry i had a um thank you for inviting me today and um it's it's been a wonderful conference and i followed uh what is what has happened over the last week and um i've been very glad to see um the proceedings of the various uh days and um the topic is something that's very interesting di digitalization of the workplace and um not very long ago i remember i was talking to somebody who has um probably factories and offices in over 40 or 50 countries and a workforce of that, that goes into runs into uh, lakhs so so somebody very very um very very successful who who first asked me where are your people where are the people who who can take you to 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 certain places in life in business and um, and and then he responded he answered uh, himself he said your people is is your digitalization he said if i if i open um, a factory in um, in germany or austria 
on New Zealand, it's not as though I have people there already, but I have my IT team over here, which goes in there before I open that factory, which goes in there two or three months before that, sets everything up so that the moment our team lands over there, the moment we recruit anybody over there, already they are ingrained into a system that, that works for us. So, so that is a, perhaps the first time I realized how important digitalization is, because it is not only a process in itself, it is, in, it is a way of carrying your organization with you wherever you go. The, the ethos that, that your organization carries, your culture, all of it flows with the system of digitalization. So, so I think over the last couple of years, it is something that uh, because of COVID now, people have become more aware of that um, that this is something very important. It is something that um, some of the successful companies were following from from a very long time. But more and more now, I think more more people will will, um, will want to uh, digitalize more. And um, this conference, therefore, is very timely. And um, the, one of the challenges I was just thinking is, so even though the larger companies have been in this for a while and uh, can can do this uh, very efficiently. Still, the SMEs face problems in terms of digitalization, and they are very people-centric still. But I'm sure that um, that that this is something that will happen. This was something that will grow, um, even if it comes at the cost of women jobs or or all other problems that will come with it. This is something that is here to to stay, to happen. So it's been very good to attend this conference to to learn from it, and I wish everybody involved my 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 best. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for your words. And uh, truly, uh, I think we have been uh, digitalized. DME has been digitalized all because of the, your vision uh, much before the pandemic was there. Uh, thank you. Uh, now, I would like to sh uh, invite Mr. Mukesh Dubey, General Manager and Global Head, Cybersecurity, on the, uh, to talk on the importance of cybersecurity in workplace digitalization. Thank you, ma'am. Uh Good morning, everyone, uh, and thanks for inviting me for this uh, particular event. Uh, OK. <coughs> uh, uh, Honorable Justice has uh, spoken about uh, the digitalization and its benefit. And uh, so as it's continued and supported by uh, Mr. Amand, the um, Vice Chancellor uh, DME. I just I would like to maybe just start in uh, uh, the note when I move to the cyber sector before that what exactly the workplace digitalization makes us and what is the different uh, uh, which has happened when we have people are talking about the industries is moving towards the digitalization and if you see the result globally out of 95 percent of the organizations are agreeing to uh, to adopt the digital uh, digital workplace but only 30 Eight percent of the companies have actually implemented it, and this is this is me the last year uh, research result which I'm uh, discussing about. So, uh, so there are uh, the benefits. Yes, we know it. Okay, and what are the benefits? The objective of the distillations is giving it from the paper based to the paper less working environment. We are moving from a boundary within the boundary working culture uh, to a boundary less environment uh, from a in physical, in person uh, collaborations, working environment to a virtual uh, working environment where people interact through the collaborations tool to, to the help of the uh, IT technologies. And, and the benefits and the key thing of the digitalization, which even Dr. Uh, uh, Justice has mentioned about, is the integration and the collaboration. Okay, so that's the main founding principle of the digitalization, which helps organizations and the companies, institutions to bring the better governance and transparency from the company's point of view. It also increases the revenue growth. It also helps us in improving the services and the customer satisfaction. And within, by leveraging the technologies like analytics, AI, ML, the robotics process analytics, blockchains. And on the other side of it, it helps the organization in Pulling the, uh, uh, giving a lot of attention to the talent. So it helps us in, in the HR uh, sections to, uh, to uh, uh, in, in talent attractions and in keeping the pool uh, and reducing the attrition state. So it helps us somewhere in the retention. And within, because it helps, it provides a flexibility, the working culture, 
uh, work from home uh, options. We have seen during the pandemics that the work from home options has been uh, widely adopted not just by the corporate or, or, or the companies, but it has been also adopted by the government sectors where they were not ready to handle it. Uh, <clears throat> so, so the overall thing, if you see that everyone is intent to do it, to move toward the digitalization. Now, uh, if we look into maybe the benefits on the one side of it, there would be some risk associated with, uh, with that as well, right? And we talk about the, with the opportunities, the digitalization also opens a channel for the risk, for the cyber risks. Because now when earlier within the boundary, we were working within a boundary, our network were closed. Now we are moving from an, a defined network boundary to a boundaryless environment. This open in threat, different threat actors altogether to, uh, to penetrate into your network. It increases in the risk of the data security. It increases the risk of the identity theft. It increases the risk of the personal uh, data protections, as well as within global purification and integrations, the business, it also increases in the risk of the compliance and the regulations. So, uh, and if we, uh, see the recent data from last five to 10 years of the data within uh, within set of the digitalizations happen and the adoptions of the IT, the cyber risk has also increased uh, within double or triple digit factor. And so as the market has also uh, changed it, uh, okay, from the cyber security uh, perspective, and which was there, in, if, if you take in some of the facts of the statistics, the overall cyber space market itself to, to handle the cyber risks for the digital space and the companies increased from 92.7 billion in 2017 to now in, uh, in 2020, it was, it reached to uh, 250 billion. And, and then again, uh, the adoptions within kind of an pandemics the world had faced, it is growing to 650 million in the coming years for, for, for by the year 2025. So uh, uh, there are uh, the opportunities uh, and it opens the door of also with the digitalization one side and adopting and facilitating, providing the functionalities to the flexibility to the organization, uh, working, uh, providing flexibility and leverage to the, um, to the employees and staffing in better collaborations, increase the productivity and all. But the other side, it opens a door for adopting the cybersecurity controls uh, and and those are not the traditions but the advanced cybersecurity controls to handle the sophisticated attacks of malware ransomware state targeted attacks which we have seen even during the pandemics which has increased from 110% to 1000% as per the certain data if we'll just take in context of maybe the uh, indian context itself so uh, uh, with this note, uh, I'll take a pause here. Um, okay, and any question, uh, panelist? Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, for you know, beautifully summarizing what are the risks involved uh, with digitalization, with real life statistics, and actually, it actually makes it the double edged sword. Uh, so, the so questions will be taken in the panel discussion, but uh, now I would like to welcome Mr. Heman Ch Sehel, founder and CEO, Kolpol, to speak on the topic of digital campus, current scenario and future trends. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Uh, you know, always uh, good to be uh, here at DME. You know, I've been uh, a pleasure of working for the last, uh, uh, you know, few years and like I think I heard already, like DME was uh, much advanced and adopted technology even before it was pushed down to almost every institution because of the, the pandemic. Uh, so talking about a digital campus, you know, it's no different. And I think almost a decade back, uh, Mark and recent said software is eating the world, right? And I think uh, education institutions were maybe a little uh, lucky to have uh, kept away from that uh, for a long time. But now finally software has started eating the education world as well and there is no uh, you know going back from here which is interesting because there would be two kind of institutions one who will not 
uh, acknowledge this that software has come in and there is no way uh, and then they will perish going forward and there are institutions who will openly embrace technology and you know make it a part of the journey uh, and 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 grow their institutions with leveraging technology and 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 that they will be the ones that will grow talking about a digital campus uh, you know it's very important to understand why it's important to be a digital campus today right and 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 one of the things that i always talk about is that uh, there are uh, you know competition drives every single market towards what's you know the best in 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 terms of the at, at that stage and if you look back at a decade back the demand and supply was different there were a lot more students applying for lesser uh, seats available so institutions were very uh, you know in the lack of uh, a better word i would say lazy they didn't care you know they were like okay i'm getting 2 lakh applications for like 3000 seats i don't care you know whatever i do i'm fine right uh, but certainly new age institutions have come up there is far more competition and that's driving now quality institutions have to get out of their comfort zone and start uh, uh, looking at a better curriculum a better student experience and several so that's one factor second is complexity if you look at new education policy which is an amazing policy uh, it's bringing so much complexity right it's talking about multiple entry exit points uh, multidisciplinarity in in education academic bank of credits so many new things uh, and that's you can't just manage these on an excel sheet or by adding more people you know you'll need sophisticated softwares to manage that level of uh, sophistication and complexity and and third uh, is the customer experience any market you know you today talking about the gen z students you know they are ordering food online they are getting access to cabs tickets they're doing video call with their parents and you know, they even finding life partners online you can't be making them run pillar to post in a campus right so uh, the expectations uh, the customers of institutions which is students and and not in a in a a commercial way but just talking about you know an institutions uh, customers are students you know the experience that you offer is going to be very different because these are the students who are very empowered in their personal lives uh, via technology uh, and and finally very very uh, important factor is here is compliance uh, more and more compliance is becoming digital in nature uh, whether it is online grievances or teaching learning feedbacks or or several other accreditation processes so a combination of this builds an amazing case for technology adoption at very high pace at education institutions today so what is a digital campus and I'll, i'll break it down into three pieces right the base is a system of record uh, where you, you're literally saying that what i used to store in a, a single computer or a, or a register i'm going to start storing it uh, in a in a computer or, or sorry in a software so whether it is attendance fees student records time tabling you start recording it in a in a software right so that's builds your soft the system of record which is very important which is what i think most of the institutions uh, are taking you know the steps with where you call it an erp it's a transaction management record keeping system you're keeping all your transactions records there so that whenever you need them different stakeholders need them at different places you get access to it immediately right and the second step in digitization or a digital campus is a system of engagement right so you go beyond just records beyond just transactions and now people are talking to each other you know how a teacher is engaging with the students how students can ask doubts how a student can reach out to the finance officer for a query and and several things like right so so systems of and then today you know what we are using right now is a system of engagement right zoom or a facebook where uh, it's a system of engagement with our friends and family so likewise in education there uh is an amazing use case for systems of engagement where teachers students parents administrators prospective students alumni all would be engaging very actively with each other uh, in in a very collaborative way and if institutions are you know and there are a lot of good institutions which are reaching there you know dimi being one where a lot of engagements happening online and if this happens there is so much of data footprint right uh, when teachers are talking to students or assignments quizzes several things there's so much of data getting created which would eventually help institutions go to the final stage which is the systems of intelligence right how do you get deep analytics about student performance faculty performance you know which students are at the risk of failure in a particular subject 
uh, and what are the best career choices for a particular student based on the activities and the scores and personality analysis. So right from student success to administrative efficiency to cost optimizations, all these things will be driven by these systems of intelligence, which institutions will be able to leverage if they're successful in adopting systems of record and systems of engagement. So a combination of these three layers is what, uh, you know, is called what I would define as a digital campus. Uh, we are very proud to be driving that uh, digital campus across multiple institutions in the country. And uh, again, you know, very proud of our association with DME. And with that, I'll take a pause and probably wait to share more in, in, in the conversation, in the panel. Uh, thank you so much, sir. That was uh, quite an insightful thing, uh, wherein we are also yet to explore many things. Uh, so though we are using them, but the realization of all these things is yet to come. So maybe we require your assistant in future also. Thank you. So now I would like to request uh, Mr. Bharat Vasudevan, Senior VP, H of, uh, Head of Ca uh, Capability, BPS Tech Mahindra, uh, to speak on strategies to successfully implement workplace dig digitalization. Uh, request you, sir. Hi. Uh, Honorable Justice, am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Honorable Justice Mr. Bhavar Singh, uh, Mr. Aman Sani, Professor Dr. Ravikant Swami, mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Purva Ranjan, esteemed fellow panelists uh, and guests gathered here. Very good morning to you. Mm -hmm. uh, so let me, okay, let me first begin by uh, sort of saying, you know, we, we need to understand the difference between digitization and digitalization, right? Now the world has been undergoing digitization for quite some time now, right? And digitization effectively is how do you convert a lot of analog pieces of information across your ecosystem, across the organization into digital assets. And uh, in, in that sense, digitization itself is a fairly tactical activity, uh, which has, you know, with the influence of uh, technology, with the kind of uh, you know, evolution that technology has seen over the last 15, 20 years, there's a lot of digitization that's happened. But when does digitization become digitalization, right? Digitization becomes digitalization when you're actually able to use all that technology to transform your ecosystem, right? To transform the outcomes that your business delivers. And that is the true sense of digitalization, right? And therefore, I think what we are seeing now accelerated by the pandemic is the era of digitalization where uh, and and to a large extent this is happening because businesses are realizing that or organizations not just businesses but organizations are realizing that if that digitalization doesn't happen now you're going to be left out right because your ecosystem is going through it and some of the basics of what you do in terms of interacting with your customers in terms of delivering superior products and services to your customers in terms of interacting with your vendors your supply chain, your value chain, all of that in, in the context of what we're seeing in the last two, three years is not going to happen without digitalization. So I think, I think the era of digitalization, which started a few years ago, has now got accelerated with uh, the onset of uh, this great big thing that the world has seen over the last uh, year and a half or two, right? Now, uh, the other thing that's happening at a breakneck pace is that uh, with, with the acceleration that one is seeing in the technology ecosystem, with the way IoT is getting more pervasive now, with the way 5G is uh, scheduled to come into not just India, but into the entire uh, developing world in a very big way, and the way devices are going to get connected, I think digital digitalization is no longer a, a mandate. I think in the future, it's going to become a way of living. Right? And... Uh, what that means is that you know the ability of an organization to adapt uh, to really keep an eye out on what is happening uh, in the world of technology and how to leverage that to transform your business i think that uh, that sense of awareness of what's happening in the ecosystem has to increase tremendously and for that to happen what we're seeing now is that digitalization is becoming a boardroom topic so it is no longer the mandate of a cio or a chief digital officer it is now uh, the mandate of the CEO. It is now the mandate of the business itself. And therefore, you're seeing these conversations increasingly happen in a board, right? And how are successful organizations getting more digitalized? How are they driving digitalization? 
uh, essentially two things, right? Number one, uh, you know, we've all heard of the term WIFIM, right? What's in it for me? And I think it's important for organizations to be able to articulate to its employees, to its supply chain partners, to its customers, to its shareholders on what's in it for them when digitalization happens and what's in it for them to continue to keep progressing down the digitalization journey. So I think being able to articulate digitalization in a manner in which it impacts each of these stakeholders, how does it influence them? I think that will help drive digitalization much faster and much more effectively, right? And along with that, what that also means is that you need to constantly measure the impact. You need to constantly report the impact. You need to constantly analyze it and, and ensure that you're learning from it and, you're, you know, and you're, your system is improving. So the whole focus on measurement, analysis, reporting, learning, evolving, and measuring again, I think that is going to become extremely crucial. It is crucial already, and it's going to become extremely crucial. And finally, what I would like to say is, you know, digitization, digitalization, I would call the next era as digital transformation. Right? And digital transformation happens when all of the digitalization that you do, you're able to actually show an impact to the society that you live in, to the value systems of your organization, uh, to the ethics, the, you know, the, the basic principles and tenets in which your organization performs. Right? And I think uh, that is going to be really when an organization is truly digitally transformed. So that would possibly be my perspectives on uh, you know on what's happening today and what I see happening going forward. Thank you. Happy to take questions when we have the time. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, and thank you for you know clarifying for us the difference between digitalization, 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 and the digital transformation. These are the three clear stages uh, altogether. Uh, so now uh, I uh, sincerely thank all the uh, our industry guests to share their uh, thoughts on the topic. Now we'll be opening the panel for uh, the discussion purposes. Uh, so for the panel discussion, we will be having two rounds. Uh, round one shall be consisting of questions for each panel member. And round two is dedicated for experience sharing and uh, sharing their views for our uh, forthcoming conference, that is GSMC uh, 2022. Uh, so now, uh, for that purpose, uh, the first question would be put by Dr. Sima. So I hand over to Dr. Sima. So we'll be starting with you, uh, Mr. Bharat, uh, coming to your way, the first question. Uh, what is currently driving digitalization? In future, what will drive digitalization? So the current and the future prospects from your side. So current, uh, like I said earlier, Dr. Seema is very simple. It is uh, transformation of the ecosystem, right? So uh, to put it bluntly, uh, organizations don't have a choice today, right? Either you embrace digitalization or you're left out. And it's no longer about, uh, you know, enhancing yourself. It is about just staying relevant. Right? So if you have to stay relevant, if you have to stay in business, in whatever you do, I mean, need not necessarily be a corporate, I think the ecosystem is transforming. So if you're not going to do that, you're just going to be left out. Right? So I think that, to me, is the number one driver uh, in terms of, you know, uh, you know, essentially shape up or be shipped out. Right? It's, as, it's as brutally honest as that. Now, in terms of the future, like I said, uh, to me, the you know what what I track in the future is is how are organizations using digitalization as a genuine uh, lever to differentiate themselves in the market that they are in, uh, to demonstrate superior value to their customers, and uh, to enable them to be better citizens of society, uh, to uh, to improve the culture of their organizations and the environment around them. I think. How does, how does digitalization enable this? Uh, how are organizations leveraging digitalization to enable this? I think that's really going to be the future, all about the future. It's basically coming down to the survival mode in the present. Thank you so much, sir. Over to you, Pujama. Right, I think I also very much agree that uh, digitalization can actually be a tool of differentiation, uh, for especially uh, from the customer's point of view. 
Uh, now I would like to ask one question to uh, Mr. Heyman Sahel. Uh, what are the skills and talents required to compete, uh, uh, complete digital transformation at workplace? So, sir, yeah. if you can throw some light on it. Yeah, sure. You know, I, I think, you know, the the question is very simple, but the it's, it's very tough to answer because there is no straightforward answer to it, right? Uh, from a digital transformation perspective, uh, the, the goals of digital transformation is very simple, right? For at the end, like, how do you measure it is either... It's improving the, you know, the, there is a, there's a improving the outcomes of the business from a perspective of revenue, right? Uh, which obviously would not happen without uh, uh, optimizing for, uh, you know, better value being generated for your customers, right? Uh, and second is either productivity and the third is cutting down on the cost, right? So if you look at all these three, first and foremost, the most important skill is to uh, uncover or understand where you know what are the processes the business uh, is is uh, you know at the moment uh, uh, having uh, before you even get into this because a lot of times institutions what or organizations what they make mistake is they put the technology even before understanding their processes so one skill would be very important is to ability to understand one the what is the what is the organization goals Second, what are the processes that will actually does help in that organization achieve those goals? Uh, and then looking at the, the interventions uh, in which process, what are the different kinds of technologies that you can adopt? Uh, and, and third is like, uh, you know, which uh, uh, Bharat mentioned that you need to have your stakeholders involved, right? How do you, you can bring in technology, but how do you get it used? How do you get it adopted? You know, and, and people will always have that, what is in it for me in their mind? So how are you looking at saying, why would, should somebody, it's like, you know, you bring in a software at college, then, but a faculty member would be often asking, what is in it for me? Why should I be using this software, right? So if that system is not aligned towards even the personal goals of the stakeholders, then adoption becomes a challenge. So again, aligning organizational goals with the personal goals of the individuals uh, over the members of the organization is very, very important. Basically, strategic alignment needs to be there. Yeah, yeah, right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, next, I would uh, like to request Mr. Mukesh Dubey. Sir, the question comes your way. Is uh, Indian companies, barring the big firms now, have opened up to digitization? Digitalization, sorry. And but what do you think? How much investments are they making towards workplace cybersecurity in this field? Okay, very interesting question. Uh, again, it is a tough one to guess the, what is the investment, but if you see the trend, uh, typically uh, for any organization, uh, having the IT um, infrastructure and the landscape, right? Typically the cybersecurity budgets depend on the what is the budget or maybe the investment they are doing it for their IT expenses, okay? And that's the way if the different research, if we refer it to the research and, and practically when we do as a consultant interact with the customers, we see that it typically depends on the type of the industry the company belong to, okay? And if, if we segregate it, maybe uh, typically maybe as a financial sector organizations, including the banking, insurance, e-commerce, uh, FinTech and all, then maybe the government sector, the manufacturing, the pharma and all, everyone has a different set of the investments planning for their IT investment expenses, as well as for the cybersecurity. And if you see the trend all across in from the banking perspective, banking and the financial sector, it's somewhere varies between 20 to 20 20 uh, percent to 28 or 30% in the range of the total IT budget okay if we see it from the government's investment has increased after the digitalization mission of the government of india across and then the budget initially it was very less but now the after that and adoptions of during the pandemics also the digitalization uh, the transformation which has happened and with the collaboration platform all the cyber security investments also has been done the budget has increased and so as for the uh, for the e-commerce and all other sectors and the pharma and the last year if we see it a uh, uh, lot of attacks the cyber security attacks happened in the pharma industry in, in, with reference to the uh, the vaccinations program and maybe with an intention of uh, 
is trading the uh, the IPs for the vaccinations program from the different organizations, right? So it all depends on it, uh, on that. Uh, but typically, it has opened the market also, as I stated earlier during the uh, brief introduction session, that the budget and the market itself has increased drastically uh, from if from five years trends to uh, somewhere to 92 or one, one, uh, 92.5 billion to somewhere to 650 billion coming to year to 2025, kind of. And I also agree because government Thanks, actually plays a very important role uh, yeah. for this. Uh, so now I would uh, I, I like to ask a question to Mr. Raman Sahani. Uh, sir, if you can throw some light on uh, what are the positive outcomes uh, which your organization has experienced or achieved from workplace digitalization? If we take it from the educational point of view. I think um, generally... Digitalization has led everyone to have this confidence that we can achieve what we set out to do that we have at uh, disposal the right processes and the mechanisms to, to do something that we're looking to do. So, um, and that I agree with of IT as well. I mean, it would, um, it would it, to set up a virtual campus is not an achievement in itself. It is how um, that digital campus would um, realize, bring about in reality the, the kind of aims and objectives that you have. So, so if 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 you are able to uh, achieve something that that is not related to to digitalization, but we're able to achieve it because of digitalization, then then the objective is served. So, um, so if you look at our our organization at TME or other other institutions that we are running in general, uh, I do think there is this um, this energy digitalization that people know that we, we that we are active um, our staff our students all know that we are not going to react to things that will happen that we are ready and we can set up targets objectives before at the start of every session every semester we can we can review things we have uh, the reports we need to review thanks to digitalization we have um, we can set about new processes new 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 things in motion because of it uh, and in time we will receive reports of those as well so so there is a continuous tracking of things there is this break um you know we're breaking the mold of this typical indian old school lethargic uh, educational space that, that people generally imagine that we can break free of that and bring in some more energy into it and we can um like i said we can generally be proactive in our approach so i think that is that proactiveness is, is something that uh, is thanks to being uh, digital. Thank you, sir. Uh, very rightly said that we have to break through that uh, mindset wherein lethargy was uh, imbibed and I think uh, it's changed altogether. The face of it has changed. Mm, moving on to Dr. Swami, Dr. Ravi Khan Swami, our uh, director, sir. Uh, a question for you, sir. Yes. Uh, what advice do you have for those who want to begin with their digital trans transformation? Uh, uh, well, uh, whenever any new thing is done, there are inhibitions and uh, it's natural psychology. It's universal psychology that uh, inhibitions are there whenever we, uh, whenever we start. Uh, say, for example, uh, uh, whenever uh, when we started with online banking, so uh, there were so many people who had inhibitions that uh, use of online bank may, uh, may make you vulnerable to scams and all that. Uh, then came Paytm and I, I still know many people who don't have their Paytm account. So uh, my point is that those who have not yet started, they should shed away the inhibitions. And it is, it is very natural that inhibitions are there whenever you start any new thing. So inhibitions have to be uh, shed away. And uh, once you start with a thing, you will realize that the, the benefits of uh, this digitalization are immense. Uh, I'll, I'll give you another example of this fast tag which has started. So um, uh, means uh, the, the entire, entire country was against the government when fast tag was started. 
but then uh, and and there were so many inhibitions because you were supposed to connect your account with that fast tag and all that but then when it started the way it is saving our time the way it is saving our energy the way it has reduced our travel time i think the advantages are immense so for those who have not yet started uh, i think the uh, the only advice is that you begin it shed away the inhibitions and soon you will realize that the advantages are immense that's all yes sir uh, i also agree because we were also uh, kind of you know uh, uh, when we were told that we have to take classes online we were a bit apprehensive but now we have become uh, very used to it and in fact we like it uh, to you know interact with our students online as well uh, now i would like to ask one question to dr nagalingam uh, sir uh, how can digital transformation be a priority for organization that have other big issues to deal with am i audible yes sir okay so now trying to uh, so good afternoon everyone uh, so the very timely question uh, first point is uh, why why means it has become the essence of the world uh, and again uh, important point is we have to make the digitalization the dna of each and every organization and each and every job so dna in my wordings is uh, digitization needs arrangement digitization needs arrangement DNA. so all the organizations should have this common dna why i say the digitization needs arrangement is there are three gaps challenges all the organization they face as far as the digitalization is concerned so already i, I told you digitalization is the digitization needs arrangement so early also the scholars they pointed out there are there is a very 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 big difference and the gaps challenges faced by the organizations are three four one is the customers needs and the expectations are getting changed especially after the covid so there is a gap huge gap huge gap so the touch sense the the feeling by going and having physically present at the business places or the groceries may be wherever and you have the product and services but now it has gone out there's a huge gap expectation and needs getting changed and next gap is that very important problem that you may be facing in your organization that the you want to introduce the technical expertise to your organization but the technological integration in your organizations will not be there or minimum that is the gap again okay. second gap so how we are going to meet it technical expertise and technological integration and next one okay assume that we all are doing all these things that uh, we are meeting the customers needs changes and everything and again we are having technical expertise and again the technological integration in our organization also very good but still there is another gap the very traditional organizational structures and very traditional leadership styles that has become huge gap in having the digitalization on board so now we are the vuka world we are work, working in the vuka world and whether we are the agile leaders this question is whether we are agile leaders otherwise you cannot 
that is very important these three gaps we have to consider more and more important than the other problems first we have to consider these things the reason is that we are going to have finally the revenue from the customers so if we are not meeting all these things we will be wash out from the business world. thank you thank you so much sir for your insightful thought definitely customer is the king at the end of the day moving towards uh, our own dr purva ranjan ma'am uh, asking uh, you what type of organizational culture is needed for having successful workplace di workplace digitalization so uh, the the question is that you have asked has more of a a uh, psychological insight answer from my end uh not a digital uh, insight because we have lot of digital experts here so it's just like when a couple adopts a child and brings the child to the family the child doesn't belong only to that couple the child belongs to the whole family and the whole family has to wholeheartedly accept the child and endorse the child so technology and integration of technology is a process which uh not just the person who is implementing it or the head of the organization or some of the leaders so the technology integration belongs to the whole organization as a whole and it has to be seamlessly adopted accepted and um endorsed by uh, everyone in the whole organization so definitely the culture that we require that that what we've been doing at dme as well that every person uh, in the organization uh feels that yes they have to adopt the technology and have to accept it and pass it on to the the customers that is the students and all the team members so uh, definitely a culture like uh, mr sani said of high energy enthusiasm and like what dr nagaling said that uh, it has to be integrated into the dna so it's not just the digital culture but the digital dna that we are looking for which is carried forward and it evolves with time so that is what we are looking for and definitely it requires a broader mindset being open to new possibilities uh, moving out of your comfort zones and one big thing that every leader must do in this is that uh, they themselves have to use the technology they themselves have to uh, you know incorporate that uh, in their their every work process they are using the technology so definitely the team is also going to use it and the right kind of uh, culture will attract the right kind of employees the right kind of customers at the end of the day and the whole whole the vibe around the whole organization will transform itself so all these things will definitely create a culture which will take the organization to move uh, much ahead of their times so this is it from my side thank you ma'am i also agree that in fact all the leaders can should set an example of adopting the technology so that we all can follow uh, so now i would like to ask one question to uh, dr farah nakvi uh, ma'am if you can throw some light on how has your country and its academic institutions implemented workplace digitalization so ma'am is from kuwait so we would like to hear from her straight from kuwait yes good afternoon everybody it's my uh, pleasure to be here in this august gathering and hearing to all of you and uh, enhancing and enriching my experience with respect to digitalization happening all over the world with respect to kuwait uh, things were not so different from india i would say uh, for uh, the first case that came here of covid 19 was somewhere around in february last year and the post that we saw that uh, things were shut down school colleges uh, you know in Ma march onwards everything was shut down but uh, we were not so prepared at that time and we were uh, as parents as educators we were left wondering how things would shape up but over a period of time we saw that uh, the internet penetration increased considerably over a period of time and it was we saw across sectors be it the oil and gas sector be it in the education sector the government took a lot of initiatives when it came to introduction of smart e services and uh, speaking specifically of the education sector uh, 
Kuwait government had already laid down their vision of 2035, where they tried had plans of using education as a catalyst to economic diversification, sustainable growth, and overall progress. But uh, the, some of the challenges that we came across, uh, I think, and when I reviewed the existing literature also, people who have done extensive work on how the education landscape was affected during COVID-19. And uh, so we found that the public schools in Kuwait were more affected in terms of lack of digital infrastructure. And uh, there were some delays in taking decision, for example, you know, when and how to implement the things. But uh, overall, since uh, the private sector presence is really high in Kuwait with the 40% of the pupils being dependent on that. So we saw very uh, adopt, uh, adoption of digitalization happening very seamlessly. The academic ERP systems, all most of the institutions have their academic ERP systems, which totally automated the entire learning and testing process. And eventually we could reach the target groups using the technology. And uh, still the work is on uh, when it comes to, you know, shape the attitudes have already been shaped towards digitalization because the initial thoughts of apprehension has already been addressed. Now it is all about enhancing the ease of use, providing the technical support to places where people are experiencing difficulties and having a strategic focus like uh, things that now the cases are very less, for example, we are having just around 25 cases a day. So we have moved on to the hybrid learning or even students are coming, students coming, you know, alternate days. And then, uh, so we have moved on to a hybrid mode and uh, we are trying to work in, uh, adopt digital uh, technology alongside face-to-face -face learning in such a way that uh, students are empowered when it comes to self-paced learning, but we are also able to keep the student engagement aspect, it, uh, you know, keep working on that. The student engagement should not be affected and customer centricity when we talk of satisfaction of all the key stakeholders. So these are uh, some of the things that I could share. Anything specific, any question you may ask? Uh, ma'am, I think uh, it, you know, it was very clear how you spoke about uh, students basically getting empowered and not, uh, you know, getting delayed in getting that education on time because over the time, if we delay more, they'll become very lazy and complacent as it is they have in their virtual worlds. But yes, the hybrid uh, mode is definitely the key for them. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, I would now uh, like to request Dr. Shah Ahmed uh, for his question. Uh, so I would like to ask you, what are some of the new job profiles created by digitalized marketing workplace that students must aim in for in future and prepare themselves in the present as well? Good afternoon, everyone. I hope uh, you all can hear me. So thank you so much for this question. Uh, I would like to. Uh, really say one thing that as an academician, we can only anticipate what is happening uh, in the industry. For that one, I believe that uh, Mr. Mukesh Dubey, Mr. Heman Sahar, Mr. Bharat Vasudev, uh, they are, they'll be more appropriate person to agree what I'm going to say. But what I anticipate is that digitalization is something that if I try to explain it, it will be like, uh, if you will not profit anything, moving for digitalization, you are definitely going to lose something. So even if you don't profit anything, you are definitely going to lose something if you don't go for digitalization. And the same thing applies to the future workforces as well. Now, when you talk about the marketers, uh, marketers are considered to be one of the, one of the profiles which generate revenues for the industry. At the same time, they're also the profile where the management has the eyes to cost cut most of the expenses. And that is where if you see the marketing profile as of now, uh, we require at least two kinds of people in every organization. One is for IT and other one is taking care of the marketing profile. So in future, definitely an integration of these two profiles is going to happen. I must uh, tell one thing to all of you here that uh, we at University of Bremi, we were really lucky that before COVID-19 happened, we were able to get approval of a new program that was a bachelor's in electronic marketing and social media. Because somewhere if you see the integration of IT and marketing and mass media is going to happen and that is going to be the future of 
that is going to be the future. And what COVID-19 has really done is COVID-19 has become a digital lubricant for the whole world. If COVID-19 would not have happened, the acceptance of technology that has happened now would, not, would have taken at least two, three more years. But it brought in the sudden change, the acceptance of technology increased. Most of the people who are sitting here who were reluctant to accept technology, they accepted it. And now the presence in the digital world is going to be more pervasive than ever. And that is the reason more and more these kind of profiles will come up. So the profile which I'm going to talk about is somewhat integration of these two things, IT and, and marketing, for which uh, in future, what will happen is that more and more outsourcing companies will be coming up because as the companies like Google and all, they will be becoming expensive. So there'll be always low cost options which will be emerging in the developing economies. So there'll be more and more business outsourcing agencies which will be coming up, which will be requiring these kind of experts. At the same time, since the companies, they will be having ready-made data by way of the reports and other things generated by these softwares and platforms. So they will be requiring the marketing strategists who will be developing the strategies based on those uh, based on those reports. So the market analysts, then the data miners, then the data analysts. So these will be the new profile which will be adding on to the profile of the marketers. So the students need to prepare themselves. So the future is really looking forward more efficient and digitalized human resources in terms of marketing. So this is something which I have to submit here. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. Uh, very correctly said that uh, digitalization is now not an option, but it's more of a natural progression that we all need to get uh, adapted to. So now I would like to ask the next question uh, to Mr. Bharat Vasudevan. Uh, sir, if you can throw some light on how do we get the entire company on board with digital transfer, uh, transformation initiatives? Uh, see, the first thing is, it has to be a boardroom agenda, right? Uh, I think, uh, like I said earlier, digitalization is no longer the uh, remit or the mandate of the CIO or the CDO. It is the mandate of the CEO. It is the mandate of the organization. And therefore, uh, for any organization to successfully travel the digitalization journey, it has to be a boardroom agenda. It has to be driven uh, from the top, and there has to be serious top-down commitment to the initiative, right? The second thing is the what's in it for me. I said this uh, earlier as well. If you have to successfully implement your digitalization strategy, every stakeholder within and outside the organization should see value coming out of it, should see his or her life uh, becoming simpler, easier, more efficient, more effective. And unless uh, your digitalization strategy and roadmap and initiative is able to very clearly articulate and demonstrate, it's not just articulating it, but when you actually implement it, it must be demonstrated. And so, uh, you know, being able to very clearly present that to all the stakeholders involved is absolutely crucial for the success of your digitalization journey. And finally, uh, there will be like, like everything that we do, everything strategic that we do, there will be hits and misses, right? It's not going to be a perfect journey. Uh, you know, we will make mistakes. Uh, Heyman spoke about this earlier when he said, you can put the best technology on top of a bad process and it will still fail, right? So we need to understand that when we take some of these strategic initiatives towards digitalizing our organization, you will make mistakes, uh, you will learn from those mistakes, and very importantly, make the necessary course corrections so that you know you don't repeat those mistakes again. So I think uh, being able to measure, and you're not going to do all of that unless you measure what you do. So there have to be tangible outcome metrics. You have to very clearly measure what you want, and then ensure that whatever you're measuring, you're able to report it out to the right audience, understand, make course corrections, implement, measure again. And that becomes a, a cycle of activity. So my, uh, in my view, these are the few things that we'll have to do to ensure that our digitalization journey uh, is uh, heading along the right way. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. Uh, 
thank you so much sir i think a long way to go when we hear you we realize that thank you uh, uh, now over to mr hemant uh, sir uh, what would be the role of ai in academics if you could throw some light on that all right yeah no, so uh, ai in academics is i think no different than any other industry right so uh, we have to not put the the cart before the horse right so uh, you know when we're looking at problems there are certain areas where obviously ai comes in place for example one big example is uh, examinations when you're doing digital examinations earlier you used to have a you know a person monitoring screens that nobody should be you know cheating or should be talking or the right student is giving and there will be limitations right now an ai is beautifully started proctoring where you can analyze the faces the right student is giving the exam and and so there is there is uh, you know so so uh, so one big example uh, so one place where ai will play a role is like one example i just gave of proctoring right a lot of non teaching non learning activities like like uh, proctor like uh, proctoring in exams or fees collections uh, you know so many such things where there is no intelligence or human emotions required would actually go to ai so i think if you look at next uh, decade or so most of the non teaching non learning activities will get digitized right uh, uh, and and in that digitization the ai will take over all. like for example a simple thing like when a student is submitting that i've paid by a check or a paid by a you know another method uh, all you have to do is reconcile that data with your bank statement and then settle it and and put it in your uh, accounts today there will be like four people doing it right and a student will go to a counter or send an email get a response back and it, it's just a matter of time when ai will start doing it so and it's already doing it in several industries recently if you look at stripes one of the first uh, acquisition in india is a in in a reconciling space a startup in that space right so that's that's one second thing is the ai would really be very useful in student guidance student uh, success so what if you know systems have access to my my personality analysis my uh, in language skills my which subject like you know even things like my cognitive uh, abilities like am i good at memorization or am i good at problem solving you know what kind of events i have been attending you know i have been attending it conclave or i have been attending hr conclave right what kind of internships am i doing so many different data points and oh, and if you collate all these together there could be such an amazing ai based mentoring that students will start getting right which is purely data driven uh, not to say that that will never replace a phys- like a in person mentor because you always need humans you know you need somebody to also understand you emotionally better but the amount of facilitation that ai based mentorship can do uh, but for that like i said we'll have to graduate from records to engagement the systems need to have that level of data before you know ai can and can play a role so that's i think two areas one like said, non teaching non learning activities becoming smarter needing less and less number of people to do all that uh, you know uh, uh, you know work and second is where as we get graduate to more and more systems of engagement more and more data being available ai start playing role in bringing in more intelligence whether it is student success or even teaching let's say you're teaching a class online and after you've taught like 20 classes it can tell you hey you know what you're taking too much time you're slow or you're too fast and so many things and imagine real time recommendations coming to you while you're teaching on a zoom and it keeps telling hey you're going too fast or you know, so many different things can happen right uh, which uh, ai can do and and that's what uh, uh, the future looks like for sure yes so definitely and in fact colpol is helping us achieve a lot of the, those things and we are hoping that more new features would be coming our way to do that kind of analysis so uh, the next question uh, is for mr mukesh and in fact it is a continuation from the previous one like uh, uh, sir if you can throw some light on specifically for academic institutions what are the cyber security features uh, that must be deployed to safeguard data of, of employees and students yeah okay. yeah sure yeah yes, yes. okay uh, so the important aspect is uh, 
as the education systems is transforming and they are adopting the digital uh, technologies, it is new to them as well. And one of the things which Mr. Hemant has highlighted that the digitalization should come from the top. So as the cybersecurity, uh, the framework or adoptions will go, okay, it's in parallel, whatever technology you are adopting, you are opening a channel for the thread and it should uh, be the controls, respective control should be in place. So one of most important aspect is that it is again a senior leadership and the management uh, decision and the mandate to build a strong framework within the institution, okay, which may be driven by the a different policy. One of the important aspect which drives that what kind of controls we should put it, that is the one and four most and four important. The other aspects which is which are important are the access control deployment of the uh, the access control systems uh, maybe the user identity access management solutions the perimeter security related the solutions that where the maybe the the course curriculum that contains the research papers and all are published for that there are the solutions which uh, uh, protects the data so data protection and data security solutions, which helps us in encrypting the data and keeping the data uh, from any hacker to steal it or to uh, even uh, make the modifications and impacts on the integrity part of it. So those are the solutions. The other side of it, uh, on the endpoint security level as well, uh, <clears throat> like when we are moving to the digitalization, the labs and the, the classrooms all will have then endpoints of uh, desktops and all are connected through it. Uh, maybe there would be an opportunity given uh, during even the pandemics where uh, students were asked to use their own devices. Okay, they are using their mobiles, uh, laptops, pods, and so to connect it to the network, the institution's network to access to the course curriculum, right? And we don't know that where their systems are vulnerable or not. They have already some infections in place, which may in fact the uh, the institution's network itself right so set of the controls which should allow uh, and protect and check verify the access from the outside okay that is the other aspect of it in addition to it last but not least on the uh, maybe even in cases the incident happened some threat happened some some attack happened or some some uh, cyber security incident happened there should be a framework and a collaboration framework where you immediately handle the incident, okay, how you can handle it and report it to the risk concerned authorities. And for this, I understand that the institutions can't do in this requires a huge investment and can't do it. And there are in the market as it's evolved it, there are the managed services company who offers the services, uh, okay, uh, to support it in many ways. And after the adoptions and evolution of the cloud computing, many of these services are available for the organizations, specifically the education institutions, to take it uh, on a SaaS model, uh, as in SaaS model services, uh, services uh, uh, model, right? And which helps us in the institutions in doing it, and it would go with them different uh, operating model, OPEX model, and so where you, uh, as you, you use, you have to pay that. Okay, so these are the things which are there and these are the models which definitely help the, uh, the institutions to adopt it and secure data, uh, data, their digital environment uh, from the cyber attacks. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, you've made some really important points. Uh, this ends round one of our panel discussion and I really thank all the panelists to share their views of role of, of IT in digitalization. Now we are moving on to round number two, uh, where uh, we are going to ask our panelists about their experience uh, during our conference GSMC 2021, and also a few questions relating to what should be our future topics uh, for our next conference. So uh, Dr. Seema, I would uh, request you to please start. Yeah, uh, to begin the round two, wherein we are just having experience sharing and requesting our uh, panel guests to give us certain inputs. Uh, over to uh, starting with uh, Dr. Farah Nakvi. Ma'am, I would like to ask you, uh, the first question comes your way. What has been your experience of GSMC 2021? And uh, if you could suggest us a topic 
uh, according to you what should be the topic of our gsmc 2022 okay first of all i would like to congratulate rdme for organizing this uh, conference because this is a very pertinent theme to have been touched upon in this con uh, conference and i had a really good experience uh, participating as a panel member and also uh, you know as uh, chairing one of the sessions and uh, because it helped us to take a look at the journey so far and uh, to make my point maybe i will uh, share a small uh, indian parable where there were uh, six uh, men in, who were in a village and they go to observe an elephant and uh, it was their first time so all of them were blind so one of them touches it and says it's a pillar then the another one touches and says it's a rope after touching the tail so the, then these blind men they begin to argue and somebody says it's a snake it's a spear it's a hand fran it's a branch then a wise man who was uh, passing by he calmly explains you are all right because uh, everyone noticed something different because each one of you touched a different part the elephant has all the features that you said so what happens that when we uh, we we were just pushed into this uh, digitalization because of covid 19 and uh, to some extent and uh, organizing a conference like this helps us to just pause take a look at our journey so far and then see okay where where you know oh, where we are lacking where we are uh, what's the way forward and examine the blind spots maybe because uh, what we see often clouds our judgments when what we don't see them that buys our uh, behaviors and our views about other things so that way this uh, my experience of gsmc conference was been very fruitful now coming back to your uh, another question second part where you are asking me like what could be the theme for the next uh, conference if the theme is if we are having this conference maybe a year later i personally believe after, uh, that by the, by another after a span of one year we will be in a position to actually look uh, more into the digital innovation aspect and uh, what one of the members is uh, one of the speakers few minutes addressed also look into the digital transformation aspect as to uh, spanning across a wide variety of sectors how this technology has enabled the transformation then what have been some of the wrong digital initiatives that we took uh, you know and how it affected the actual revenue and profit improvements so that could be one aspect uh, to look into it and uh, so basically uh, another uh, very interesting theme could be look into uh, or we can put it as digital return on investment okay we invested have so heavily into getting digitalized so how has been a return of investment like so maybe a year later where uh, these could be one of the aspects to look into digital innovation digital transformation and uh, uh, studying the impact of the digital initiatives that were taken into um, uh, by uh, that we all uh, adopted in these two years and how to stay alive and to move from thriving to flourishing so that's uh, my uh, inputs from my side thank you thank you so much ma'am i just want to want to uh, share here that uh, mr bharat is actually uh, having some uh, meeting so we would like just to facilitate him uh, with a token of uh, appreciation from our side thank you thank you so much sir thank you for sparing your time thank you my apologies for uh, dropping off but unfortunately there's a small business commitment that i had uh, originally committed to so i'd like to thank dme for this opportunity to have me on this uh, panel and i wish uh, dme all the very best thank you thank you sir thank you so much thank you very much bye 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 so uh, thank you dr farah for uh, giving some really good suggestions uh, digital innovation transformation and the various initiatives so we are uh, definitely noting down all the suggestions and we'll uh, try to accommodate it in the next uh, uh, conference now i would request dr shahad ahmed khan to uh, share his experience because he was there with us in uh, gsmc 2020 also and now in 2021 also and also sir what should be our topic for the next conference uh thank you so much for having me for the two consecutive uh conferences that you have organized and it was really an honor and pleasure for me to be associated with you 
uh, GSME 2020, which was organized on the theme, uh, remote working practices, challenges, opportunities, and future trends. And uh, 2021, you organized in workplace digitalization, challenges, opportunities, and future trends. Uh, which I have, what has been very intriguing for me is that you really have a very strong team of organizers who are, who are courageous enough to organize a week long event. Because in international conferences, which that we are organizing, it's really difficult to even organize a one day event. And it really kudos to your team that you have been taking up this kind of activity. And I'm mis um, mis surprising that you have been cons consistently uh, doing yeah, it on yeah, all seven days. Yeah. Yeah. So that is something which is really commendable. And, and it is really inspiring the people across the world of academia because you people are inspiring them uh, in, a, in a better way. So kudos to your team for that. My experience has been because, uh, it has always been a pleasure to discuss with those kind with the kind of audience that you have. Uh, it is really uh, they are interactive number one and the kind of engaging sessions that are organized. So it is really really intriguing and interesting. So it is not only interesting for the resource persons. I believe that it is becoming interesting for the audiences also because I see always the number of audiences hundred plus. So it it is, speaks volume about the kind of events that you are organizing. Regarding the second question that was asked, uh, I really feel that now, though, since the world is changing, uh, the type of workplace, the kind of system is also changing. And somewhere I feel that this digital transformation and the remote working practices that you have already organized, uh, it is leading towards a new kind of practice, which is far more sustainable, far more effective, and it is really reduce the, foot, the carbon footprint that we are having. Uh, further, the digital transformation that people are doing now, it is really going to reduce the travel across the countries because now uh, many of you, you don't have to really travel to a different country and work there. You can do it through remote working by sitting in your own country or sitting in your own village. So the rural development that we have been talking about, the rural employment that we are talking about, now the companies can be there in the urban workplace or it can be there in the developed country but the work opportunity is right there at your doorstep. And because of remote working, you can do it. You don't really have to migrate to a new place. And that is really going to have implication on many aspects. It is going to uh, reduce the dependency because many of us, for example, me, I'm having two houses where I'm not living. Still, I'm living in a rental place. So you are really going to have this kind of things in future where you really don't have to move because of the digital transformation. But still, I feel that for the business world, sustainability, talk on sustainability has been an issue because uh, businesses, if you look into most of the ecologists and most of the environmentalists, they have been blaming business world that it is because of the profit maintaining, it is because of the corporates that the world is being ruined, that global warming is increasing, the climate change is, ha is happening. So somewhere I feel that DME being a very responsible organization, if they can organize, a conference on the theme of implementing sustainable practices in business. I believe that it will be a really a major takeaway for the next year conference. And that will be my suggestion. Thank you so much for your appreciation and encouragement, sir. Give, uh, gives uh, means a lot when it comes from uh, globally placed people. Thank you. Uh, now I would request Dr. Nagalingam, uh, sir. You had already mentioned to us that uh, you know our next conference topic should be exploring sustainable digitalization. Uh, I request you to uh, throw some more light on the various aspects of this topic and also request you to share your experience in uh, GSMC 2020 and 2021 both. Over to you, sir. Thank you. So, am I audible? Yes, sir. Yeah. So, first of all, I would like to uh, share my happiness uh, with uh, DME uh, throughout 2020 and 2021. Uh, and I wish you all the very best in coming years as well. And coming to the first point, uh, the sustainable digital digitalization. That is my suggestion. So for coming for the coming year, it's a theme. Uh, the reason why I say is that uh, though the, 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 
the adoption of the digitalization has become the compulsion has become the compulsion so how we are going to take that sustain over the future period that is the question that is the gap so we have in 2020 we have analyzed the remote remoteness and this year we are again analyzing the areas on the digitalization so next year why don't we think about how we are going to sustain how we are going to be the role model for having some sort of conferences which are very timely and which will give good insights to the world so in that sense sustainable digitalization you can consider you can have three concerns one is uh, the sustainable b2b digitalization sustainable b2b digitalization and again i will add one more even sustainable b2c digitalization so final end the end of of any organization is to have the customer and through the customer you are going to have the revenue and through the revenue the profit that is the end, end, end result that you are expecting not more than that so how we are going to sustain the digitalization in the b2b and the b2c that is much important and how we are going to sustain the ecosystem that is how we are going to have the green technology next thing green technology right that's very important that we have to analyze and again third point is since this has become the compulsion and knowing or unknowingly we have adopted everything right but there is a gap whether each and every organization and each and every country they have come up with the sufficient and well accepted the regulatory mechanisms policies and regulations there is a gap there is a gap so that also should be come up so by having these three areas embedded into the sustainable digitalization i think we will be able to give good knowledge to the world that is small knowledge we don't want to target a very big one a small thing it's enough so we will become a role model why i say is uh, i i i i see the dme the 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 staff you are the staff who can do who can do what is it impossible thing you make possible right so having <laughs> seven days conference uninterrupted conference and again through the technology and online it's not a simple thing you know it's a very big challenge but you have done two years so i i now i am in the second part right so, so 2020 also i was there and now i am there i will be traveling with you and uh, you see the it's very difficult uh, 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 dr shah said <laughs> organizing one day conference is very difficult right but you all are you all are having like the 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 the, the, the train compartments the follows the engine right i think the engine is your uh, director and the vice chancellor and you all are following uh, the path and you all are doing a very good job you know so it is it is it is not simple and i that's what i said you make impossible possible so why don't you try this one also and 
and we become a, a role model to the world. And again, uh, the first conference, you had many papers, and this conference also, you are having many papers. And uh, better to have a good um, the peer review system. And uh, even I, I can see that you are encouraging your second year students, second year students to come out with uh, some, some uh, papers to this conference. That's good. So little, little inducement, influence that you are making to the students. So start, start. So it's a it's good thing. So I saw two or three papers from your students. Uh, I, 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 I actually I, I I did not know that uh, these are students. Then I was I was <laughs> I started to ask question, asking the question from a PhD scholar. But then some of the staff said no no sir this is a second year student. Then I I I I, I came very down very, very <laughs> came down and. Ask very simple questions. So, but uh, the the point is that you all are encouraging even the second year students. So please uh, make make that attempt continuing from your students to the final level and have some sort of good knowledge coming out from your students. And at least fifty percent of the papers that should come from your uh, DNA. That's good, I think. 50% outside, 50% DME. I don't know the number that you can decide. So I'm very happy and uh, please go ahead and uh, my blessings is, is always there and uh, God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. And in fact, you have been also a very integral part of the past conference also and this conference also. And uh, thank you for providing you, uh, your insights into the next conference topic also. In fact, you have uh, suggestions of the theme as well as the th sub-themes. So uh, we will definitely uh, keep your suggestions in mind. Uh, now I would uh, request uh, Mr. Mukesh to share his thoughts uh, because uh, he has also been... Uh, the first time a part of the GSMC series. So, sir, uh, if you can uh, you know, share uh, with us how has been your journey with us so far and uh, what would the topic you would suggest for our upcoming GSMC 2022 uh, uh, team should take up? Yeah, sure. So, uh, first of all, I'd congratulate the DME team. Uh, I've been attracted and invited by Dr. Uh, uh, Purva ma'am and Seema ma'am. Okay, so thanks for even giving me this opportunity, the forum where I can uh, present my thought. And uh, it's it's really a pleasure uh, here interacting with uh, all the academics in and the, um, the industry. As you know, I'm doing the research as well. So it's a personal maybe learning for me for individually for myself. It's also learning and interacting with all of you. Uh, on the second part, um, uh, the topics which I was uh, maybe thinking about it I mean, after going through the several discussions and suggestion, uh, okay. Uh, and I'll just focus with the digitalization itself, uh, maybe from the Indian context, uh, because the government has, uh, Indian government has taken a started in 2014 after just embarking the, uh, the journey 2014 and 15. The digitalization journey has started, okay, and the idea was uh, for the better governance, ease of doing business, and the life for the citizens and all those aspects, right? So uh, there are many research, many conferences happening on the on the business and the corporate side of it. I would recommend maybe a couple of the things which actually are very much related to the general public. Uh, I would say one is on the how the digitalization uh, transformation support and help the judiciary system itself, okay, in the reduction of the cases and the handling the cases and all those aspects in the, that is the one topic which I would suggest. The other uh, important aspect which we have seen it uh, is recent uh, farm, uh, farmer movement in India itself, okay. And it is all about the 
market how the how the aggregate uh, agricultural products in the markets will go to the uh, sorry should be sold the made available to the market and all right there are a lot of research which is happening <clears throat> and focus on the lab side of it but how with the help of the district technology the gap between the lab and the farm itself can be sorted can, can be reduced can be reduced and this whatever be the, the initiatives has been taken by the government of india in uh, expanding the uh, network footprint through broadband uh, uh, lines and all to different uh, at the villages and all okay uh, just to, to just to enable the farming sector so how the digitalization digital transformation is helping the farming sector maybe as an other important topic from the market standpoint and maybe from the other developments and which helps actually the farmers in uh, producing their uh, uh, grains and all uh, so that's the thing two topic which i would suggest here maybe for the coming year thank you so much sir thank you for your words of encouragement now moving on to mr hemant <clears throat> sir i would like to ask you you also been a part of this gsmc series for the first time though we are associated otherwise how has been uh, the journey so far and uh, also if you could uh, suggest us the topic for gsmc 2022 yeah no uh, absolutely been a you know, privilege to be a part of the uh, the conference and uh, had a chance to have interaction with other or uh, listen to the other panelists uh, been have uh, been a, a great and i'm always you know uh, surprised with the quality of uh, you know, conferences and events and activities dme uh, keeps doing and uh, it's incredible because we also work with uh, so many institutions and so this is very rare the amount of effort and initiative uh, dme takes in organizing these activities uh, from a suggestion perspective being a practitioner i'm very biased towards action so my only suggestion would be if we can actually narrow down the discussions to very specific topics because now with the with so many uh, conferences and webinars and seminars happening uh, uh, it, it would be really uh, important for us to have that Uh, focus on outcomes right what are we what are we planning to get out of this uh, conference right and and have that very sharp focus and and if possible to have few sessions very very sharply focused on specific uh, points and discussions and and uh, uh, also have more uh, uh, you know collaborative target audience where it's not just one way where let's say i'm speaking and there are like 100 people listening to me but rather like you know where people are asking questions more engagingly and you know there is a back and forth and more collaborative uh, that would be my suggestion so having a, a focus on more specific uh, uh, topics uh, than broad uh, which are more geared toward uh, you know action uh, where we can have outcomes okay these are the four things institutions can do or uh, let's say we had uh, Uh, you know mukesh today you know would have been great to have like five uh, you know the commendations from him how institutions can uh, be more safer uh, from a, a tech perspective right and and i think that would really be so a little bit more biased towards action uh, would would be amazing in the in the next con well taken sir well taken thank you so much for that valuable input uh i just i would just like to tell uh, everybody that uh, mr hemant has some engagement so we will facilitate him uh, with a token of appreciation just give us a moment sir thank you so much for being a uh, part of the conference and uh, for your contribution here today and otherwise at the back end as well thank you so much thank you so much uh, i hardly need any appreciation from dme we are very proud of the association and we are very very excited to see how dme is growing and scaling up and in, in all possible ways and uh, our best wishes all the time and uh, looking forward to uh, a longer term relationship uh, as usual and a special congratulations to the leadership of dme uh, for organizing such a wonderful event and taking that initiative and also to all the team members who have been you know or working hard to make this successful uh, congratulations thank you sir thank you so much uh, just uh, last but not the least request uh, mr aman sahni sir uh, to suggest a theme for the upcoming conference of gsmc 2022 thank you um 
I like I like this more collaborative democratic way of uh, coming up with a with a theme for the next conference. Um, but but perhaps it is a bit early at this point. Uh, I'd like to think that our uh, events, all events, should be or tend to be um, topical, uh, uh, contemporary, uh, progressive. So and, and and also worthwhile. So I'd like to think that we should take until the last moment possible the deadline that we have to decide to see what's what's the talk of the town, what's what's everyone talking about, and what we should be talking about, and um, a bit more research behind us. So um, so so yes, I think we should wait a while. But 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 wonderful ideas from everyone. And if I had to if we had to decide today, I would suggest um, things like. Um, um perhaps you know the economic recovery from from the initial uh COVID spike um, or cryptocurrency um, unregulated markets or the, the rise of the unicorns they're all getting listed so there are lots of things right now that are happening that we could talk about uh but but i but i would suggest let's let's wait and see what what else emerges and then we can evaluate thank you Thank you very much, sir. I would like to conclude, uh, give my concluding uh, remarks to people here. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we had a brainstorming session and a lot of excellent inputs from various uh, fields like technical people, security people, as well as the academicians from across the globe. So, DME is really uh, thankful to all the people that you took out time and joined us. Like uh, Mr. Mokesh rightly said that uh, we have to, uh, you know, really think about these cyber security threats, real life statistics, where uh, devices are connecting to course curriculum out or online procedures and controls of these access points have to be checked. And also, he spoke about uh, collaborations to handle, you know, uh, because investment, uh, it's all investment centric. So there are consultants who can be appointed or collaborated with to have uh, SASS that is software as a service and uh, co cloud computing because and now that it becomes the new norm. So we would be very much requiring the data to be handled properly with a lot of security and you know investment of course. And then Mr. Heyman rightly told us about how institutions embrace technology when it comes to our own uh, new education policy wherein there are multiple entry and exit points and he spoke about the complexity of all of these he very well uh, rightly said about digital campuses software will store everything in future right from student engagements to alumni to the families to the data footprints which would be there uh, so he also spoke about uh, proctoring which is the way new way ahead for non-teaching and non-learning uh, has a lot to do with, uh, you know, we have a future trend of AI mentoring. Of course, uh, physical mentoring uh, doesn't replace that. But yes, uh, systems are so would become so complex that uh, artificial intelligence mentoring has to come into picture. Uh, moving on then, uh, Bharat Vasudevan sir rightly told about uh, the differences between digitization and digitalization. And of course, the digital transformation. And it was uh, very much, he said, uh, he wanted to put things straight that if a transformation of ecosystem has to happen, so there is no choice for the organizations. And it is a mandate of the boardroom that they have to think about IOTs and 5G and all of this. Then Aman sir spoke about uh, synergy to be created uh, due to this digitalization and new three things. And of course, the vision of tracking systems. And uh, Ravikan Swami sir, our uh, director sir he uh, said that inhibitions have to be shedded away be it our faculty members be it whosoever is the stakeholders of the organization outside and inside both seeing the benefits it has in future he very aptly uh, linked it to how uh, we are you know having an we were having in apprehensions when using uh, paytms when using our financial cards and uh, atm cards on online basis then uh, Nagalingam sir rightly said that there were gaps in the arrangements and the customer needs to, uh, you know, be we need to change as per the customer uh, to have technological integration, technical expertise. Then our own Purva ma'am, she spoke about technical integration has to be endorsed by everyone. It is a process, of course, and all have to be involved in it. Then Dr. Farah spoke about the various government initiatives 
uh, in the ma- ten internet penetration increased education landscape and she also sort of talked about empowering students in engaging them uh, online as well as in the hybrid mode dr shahad ahmed spoke about how academicians uh, if you it will not profit us it's not going to it's definitely going to you know we are going to lose on things if you don't go digitalized and he spoke about obviously the integration and it and marketing wherein uh, he said that they already have this electronic marketing and it course in the universities that's all uh, from my side now would i'd like to invite dr pooja sharma to announce the best paper awards thank you very much ma'am uh, so uh, <clears throat> just to brief our audience we actually had uh, four technical sessions based on the four sub themes of our uh, conference fintech marktech hr tech and edtech and we uh, received a very uh, good response and very high quality papers were presented uh, so it was a tough competition and it was tough for our uh, session chairs also and there was a lot of close competition but now we have the winners with us Uh, so i would like to start with the the winners of day 1 which was held on 15th of november on the topic of fintech uh, so the winners are mr udit mohanty and ms anandita uh, bhattacharji and the title of their paper was distributed ledger technology an opportunity in shaping economy of things um uh, so uh, do we have mr udit mohanty with us if you can switch on his camera um probably there is uh, some internet connection yeah uh, yeah sorry i i was outside uh, thank you so much uh, for the acknowledgement uh, i think i was outside i was uh, disconnected two three times uh, but i really appreciate the the kind of initiative dme has taken and the kind of warmth with which the participants were uh, you know given to attend and uh, presented papers i am really honored and thanks uh, to to uh, judges and uh, thanks to the organizers as well it was really amazing and i would look forward uh, for uh, more such interaction thank you so much thank you thank you very much sir uh now for day 2 uh, which was held on 16th of november on the uh, theme of mark tech uh, dr priyanka malik and dr shalini gautam are the winners and the title of their paper was impact of iot that is internet of things on customers purchase intention uh so i do believe that we have uh, priyanka malik ma'am and uh, shalini ma'am so thank you authors for your contribution it was a very informative paper Shalini ma'am would you like to say something yes thank you thank you so much for giving us the opportunity for for pushing us to write the paper so thank you so much i think my co-author dr priyanka is also here so uh, dr priyanka if you would like to say something uh, i don't know if she would be able to unmute herself now i am able to unmute actually yeah. uh, uh, otherwise host was not allowing me to unmute <laughs> so so first of all i'm uh, very thankful to dme uh, the whole organization and uh, then i would like to um, you know thank uh, mr khan who has uh, actually recognized our effort so i am very thankful to him and uh, last but not the least i am very thankful to dr shalini gautam who is my co-author and i hope that uh, you know uh, we will uh, be able to write Uh, more and more paper and will be able to present uh, you know uh, you guys in a better manner thank you so very much thank you thank you thank you ma'am uh, now uh, for the hr tech which was held on uh, 17th of november uh, the best paper award goes to miss shanu jain and miss sarita devi and the title of their paper was past present and future of work from home a bibliometric analysis so uh, shanu ma'am uh, is from our college only and ms sarita devi is from delhi school of economics uh, ma'am uh, do we have sarita ma'am with us or uh, maybe you can say the words 
Yes, she's very much here with us, ma'am. Thank you so much. And thanks to the session chairs, to the conveners, to the head and the entire team of DME for letting us this opportunity of uh, writing and presenting our paper. So I would like uh, Ms. Sarita to share her thoughts, if she would like to. I would like to express my great thanks to the entire DME team, to Lucha, ma'am, and uh, Professor Sean Watts for their great recognition and patience. Thank you so much. And we will definitely uh, look forward for another presentation in the G GSMC. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, ma'am. And on uh, day four, uh, the topic was EdTech. And uh, the best paper was to goes to Dr. Pooja Sharma, that is myself, um, uh, which uh, the paper I was able to co-author with Ms. Shanu Jain. And the title of the paper was Motivation and Perception Towards Online Learning, Growing Interplay in the Topical COVID-19 Era. Uh, so again, I would also like to uh, thank my session chair and uh, Dr. Nagvi is also there. Uh, so thank you very much, ma'am. And in fact, I would say that uh, this paper was uh, uh, um, a result of our own uh, experiences at DME because uh, initially we were also facing various you know, apprehensions towards online learning, but uh, we thought that why not take the opportunity to do an, um, uh, write a paper and do some research as to how uh, we can help students to motivate and get used to this online medium. And that's how we were able to conceptualize this paper. Uh, Shanu, if you could, if you want to share some thoughts on it. No, thank you, ma'am. So I, as I always say that uh, co-authoring a paper with you is always a pleasure. Uh, you being a research mentor to me, as I always say. So it's a great learning. So a long way to go. So we look forward for great publications as well for these papers. So congratulations to all the winners as well. Thank you. Uh, so before, ma'am, we proceed further, actually, Mr. Mukesh is, uh, has to proceed on some urgent work. So I would like to felicitate him. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mukesh sir, for joining us today. And uh, we're just uh, thank you, showing our certificate of appreciation for you. Thank you very much for this. Thank you very much for inviting me. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Puja, ma'am, you can take further. Now I would uh, like to invite uh, Dr. Pro Professor Dr. Purva Nanjan, ma'am. Uh, to introduce our uh, conference convener for GSMC 2022. Uh, so, ma'am, over to you. Thank you, conveners. Uh, as mentioned by some of the panel chairs, that we've hosted a seven-day long conference. And what you are saying today at the valedictory has been a long process of planning of four to five months, getting... Uh, some good papers, more than 50 papers, and at a point that we actually had to reject a lot of papers uh, because we were very clear that it has to fit the certain theme that we have mentioned. So we were able to select some good 30 papers, and we had a 360-degree collaboration in terms of the people and the process pioneers, that is the HR conclave and the IT conclave, as well as the research pioneers, across uh, different areas, panel members. So it was not just cross-domain, it was cross-culture, uh, you know, cross-sectoral, all, all the integration was done and it, it does take a lot of time to plan these kind of events. And uh, I can see the smile and the happiness on the faces of the conference conveners of this year because with the valedictory ends, their work for this year also uh, comes to a happy ending. My work, however, begins from here with all the food for thought that everybody has given, uh, you know, to research more. And as uh, Aman sir said that we have to make it more contemporary, as Heyman said, we have to make it more collaborative. So everybody has given their inputs and I take it as an homework to me uh, to be able to plan a bigger, better platform for GSMC 2022 being more collaborative with different universities, perhaps across globe, and uh, make it more fruitful, uh, more process-driven conference. And uh, as, as we say that we have created a legacy of uh, GSMC, uh, which is a Global Strategic Management Conference. And we've had a successful series part two this year. Moving on, 
we have two conference conveners, Dr. Suchi Goyal and Ms. Shruti Oplish, who will be taking on uh, the baton and will be taking forward this legacy further from uh, the current conference conveners. And very soon, with deliberations and all, we'll be moving on to the planning phase of GSMC 2022, and keeping ev and we'll keep everybody informed as we believe that uh, having transparency and sharing information help us to grow better, improve better. And uh, the suggestions and recommendations that have come from all of you have been duly noted by our current conveners and shall be passed on for better research and deliberations to the uh, the upcoming conveners. So we have Shruti Oplish with us. Um, would like to say something because this is going to be a new challenge that we have given to you. And uh, your task Hello. will be to not just to carry forward the legacy, but to enrich it further. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Um, I'd just like to congratulate the uh, current conveners for the wonderful uh, conference that we've had. And uh, of course, the suggestions that we've had, the use of uh, contemporary issues off the top of my head, though I can think that what we should be planning GSMC 2022 about could be public policy and management issues in the public policy domain, get our white paper document out of the papers that we present and probably give suggestions to the respective ministries. Uh, we could all always and uh, we should rather collaborate uh, uh, you know our minds together and uh, the brilliance of academicians here uh, on the topics of sustainability especially since the cop 26 is going on in uh, glasgow the glasgow pact i mean uh, the trajectory of uh, where the climate financing is coming from and going towards that's always another opportunity of exploration we have a lot of topics to explore uh, like um, Mr. Sani rightly pointed out, it is the last minute panic that should uh, uh, rather dictate what the conference theme should be, especially when there are so many uh, options of, uh, uh, you know, having a conference uh, theme. Since we are a developing country, there are a lot of options that we have uh, in terms of uh, research that can be produced and that can be imbibed and that can be fruitful to our nation. Thank you so much. And uh, we definitely take all in the suggestions and uh, come out with uh, an exciting new theme and uh, take forward the legacy of GSMC. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, everybody. Here uh, we come towards the end of uh, this session, this wonderful, uh, with this wonderful audience. So I, Dr. Seema Maam, Associate Professor, DME Management School, also the convener of Global Management Conference, GSMC 2021, formally extend uh, a vote to, I'm here to present the vote of thanks. A very good afternoon to one and all. I'm very humbled and honored to be a part of this eight day Global Management Conference. I, uh, I don't know whether I should, I'm very excited though. But it feels that, you know, now uh, the work, as ma'am said, the work starts for her. But yes, parallelly, I haven't uh, even, you know, given it up that my work has ended today. I think uh, there's a lot I have to complete and then pass on the baton to my next conveners for GSMC 2022. So it's been a very good exposure for me and my co-convener. So I extend gratitude to all the eminent speakers who grace today's IT conclave subsumed under umbrella of GSMC 2021 and on behalf of the uh, GSMC would not be possible without the keynote speakers and the session chairs we had from various parts of the globe. Uh, it's indeed a privilege to have the speakers from corporates and academicians across various corners of the world. It was so wonderful to hear from you all. Token of appreciation Definitely for Mr. Heman Sayal, Mr. Mukesh Dubey, Mr. Bharat Vasudevan, Professor Nangalingam, Dr. Shah Ahmed, Professor Sheen, Sheen Watts, uh, though he's not present here, but definitely for him, Dr. Farah Nakvi. Also, I thank the research paper contributors who shared their exposures in the various fields and helped us uh, to imbibe, uh, you know, express and uh, in further improve upon our knowledge part and also helped us to make this GSMC a great success. Uh, Chief Patrons of DME Management, Shri Vipin Sani sir and Miss Kiran Sani ma'am for the backbone of the college. Also thank uh, 
Aman sir, our vice chairman sir, who is there to support us all the time. I think uh, because of his vision only, we are, uh, you know, uh, whatever feedbacks we got today, we are able to uh, actually uh, go through this process just because he is there to give us that food for thought and work on it. It and it definitely comes to us through Dr. Purva. Thanks uh, to our learned Honorable Justice Bhavar Singh sir, DG sir, for his blessings and vast exposure and experiences. Hearty vote of thanks to Director DME, Professor Ravi Khan Swami sir. He is always there to support us and also the convener advisor. He is always uh, there to give a yes or a nod for everything, whatever we request. So, really have a lot of comfort working with him. Dr. Pura Ranjan, our HOD, uh, not only an HOD, he, she is this GSMC is our brainchild, I should say that. Thank you ma'am for your uh, uninterrupted uh, support 24 by 7. It's been uh, three, four months that we are, uh, you know, living through this GSMC. I told her the other day that I, I get it in my dreams also, <laughs> that how will it be tomorrow? So, uh, but uh, getting this feedback from all the uh, speakers from across the globe, I'm really excited to know that I think I have been able to, we have been able to justify whatever task was assigned to us. Then uh, thanking conference secretaries, Ms. Roli Vadwa, Ms. Shruti Oplisht, voluntarily extending her support every now and then. Thank you so much. On-screen host, Dr. Shalini, Dr. Shruti, Dr. Uh, Pooja Sharma and Shanu Jain ma'am. And our Zoom management team, headed by Dr. Ms. Pooja Tripathi, Shanu ma'am and Mr. Bhupinder Singh. Editorial board, thank you so much. Dr. Shalini, Dr. Suchi Goel, Ms. Pooja Tripathi, Ms. Shanu Jain, Mr. Bhupinder Singh and Ms. Roli Vadwa. And of course, our newsletter team, which comprises of Dr. Suchi Goel and the team Interact. Special thanks to uh, Mr. Anmol, uh, sir, here, who contributed largely to make creatives and the posters to bring in this virtual conference live and vibrant for all of us. And of course, not to miss our student volunteers who presented the papers in absentia. That was so Soma Bama, Janvi Anand, Pearl Chohan, Tejaswini Verma, Palak Bajpai. A big thank you to my uh, co-convener, Dr. Pooja Sharma. I'm quite thankful to her. She's a wonderful uh, colleague and a person here. Without her, it would not have been possible. Last but not the least, extending thanks to special audience today, that is the academicians, the people, uh, the budding youth, these are students and our student paper presenters, fully appreciative of, uh, you know, whatever uh, they have done and pro uh, thought provoking and in, in and they have also i think had a good takeaways from today's thought provoking and inspiring sessions thank you all for patiently hearing me out uh, i think uh, last but not least i would like to say as it was said that the train has uh, the engine is very strong definitely the engine and the engine driver in the form of dr purva she's there Though uh, she had said that ladai bhi hogi or uh, arguments will also happen. But then I think ma'am that was worth. Thank you so much for your help. Thank you. That I think the session uh, comes to an end of a uh, virtual session. And we have uh, bid the thank you to all of you. Happy New Year. <laughs> See you in 2022. Thank you all. Thank you everyone. Uh, we'll be sharing the attendance and feedback form in the uh, chat box. So everyone is requested to please fill the form. Students kindly uh, copy the form link and uh, you can fill it later. Shanu, I think we can stop the recording as well. Thank you, ma'am. I would request Pooja ma'am to... Yes, ma'am, right.